This diatribe can be considered a companion piece to an incomprehensibly stupid op-ed I found on the Huffington Post the other day. It's by one Dr. Peggy Drexler, and it's titled, Why Kids and Religion Mix. If you'd like to get your bearings before I disembowel her argument and strangle it with its own intestines, you can pause the podcast and find the link on the show notes for this episode at scathingatheist.com. Or better yet, don't bother, because it's so engorged with stupidity that even a casual encounter with it might actually lower your overall capacity for intelligent thought. Dr. Drexler, a research psychologist, gender scholar, and bona fide horse's rectum, has decided that even people who don't believe in God should still get their kids some good church learning, and she makes the case for it in the circuitous way one has to if one intends to justify such a brainless position. We start by meeting Sam, a child of two Catholic apostates who were surprised one night when their son decided to start a meal off by thanking Jesus for providing everything. Now, they shouldn't have been too surprised, of course, as we all know that Christians aren't above proselytizing to children without their parents' permission, but regardless, we now find Sam's parents on the horns of a dilemma. They don't want to force their kids to adopt their take on religion. After all, that's probably what their parents tried to do to them. But they also don't want their kid being indoctrinated by some morally dubious charlatan neither. Personally, I'm a firm believer that this shouldn't be a dilemma. On the one hand, you have a group of people actively pushing unverifiable claims about the very nature of the universe, and on the other hand, you have reality. You wouldn't want your kids muddying their minds with alternative forms of mathematics or biology. You wouldn't leave it to them to decide if scientific or homeopathic medicine works better, so why would you feel any differently about religion? Sure, eventually you want your kids to go out in the world and make up their own minds, but shouldn't you start them off with a firm grounding in reality the way you would with every other subject known to humanity? But as you might have guessed, Dr. Drexler would have you believe otherwise. She goes to great lengths, in fact, to list all the perceived virtues of church attendance, a feat that she largely accomplishes by vaguely referencing studies that she then fails to cite. But a lack of data doesn't stop her from making some rock-solid claims, like, Participation in a religious community may help kids develop a strong moral core. Religion seems to be somewhat comforting to kids. And my personal favorite, Religion can provide a certain stability that children welcome in a world that's full of change. Well, it's hard to argue with facts like those. No, seriously, it's hard to argue. What the fuck do they even mean? Wait, though, the op-ed gets more asinine still. News-making men like Lance Armstrong, who cheated and lied over many years, give us reason to increase children's exposure to people and ideas that help them develop a strong moral code. Really, Peggy? Really, you're going to hold up the fucking clergy as your standard for a strong moral code? You're going to take the only profession in the country that's synonymous with child rape. And so you're going to suggest that that's the moral alternative to Lance Armstrong. All right, so maybe I'm being too Vatican-centric here. Maybe Peggy and her flock would hear that and say, come on, come on, now not all priests are pedophiles. And that's true, but the fact that you have to point it out is certainly ammo for me. But for the sake of argument, let's set all of that aside. Let's instead think of just the Baptists and Pentecostals and evangelical preachers who can keep their dicks to themselves and instead simply instill good Christian values like hating gay people and women who exercise biological autonomy. Not good enough for you? All right, let's set those assholes aside, too. Let's just consider the most liberal, open-minded, six flags over Jesus church you can possibly imagine. One with a watered-down message, a full-time rock band, and a fucking Starbucks. Now, let's say you found this church with a transgender, anti-gun, pro-sunshine, and puppy tails priest who's a fucking Nobel laureate and gives 94% of his income to charity. So what? What's going to happen to this strong moral code when your kid starts reading up on that Jesus character and finds out that he's a pro-slavery, misogynistic, bigoted liar that promised to return 2,000 years ago and still hasn't made good? But wait, Dr. Drexler's not through being stupid just yet. Immediately after suggesting that the group of people that brought us the Inquisition, the largest pedophilia scandal in human history, and Monsignor Meth are somehow better than a one-testicled cyclist on steroids, she throws out an assertion you couldn't justify to a retarded sea monkey. In a world where evil often trumps good, religion can't hurt. Are you sure, Peggy? Because I'm I'm pretty sure somewhere I read something about religion being used to start wars and subjugate minorities and justify slavery and inhibit science and oppress women and tyrannize nations and roll back social evolution and rationalize suicide bombings and otherwise validate every morally repugnant institution in the history of human civilization. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, as I speak, someone's being murdered because of it. No, sorry, Peggy, but once again, you're stuffing your lunch up your ass here. It's atheism that can't hurt. At its best, religion is naive and arrogant, and at its worst, it's fatal. 